Turkey. Istanbul. Who knows what the capital was called before the First World War? Hmm? Somebody? Anybody? Hillary, you should know this. Your father was wounded at Gallipoli. Constantinople, sir. Yes, Constantinople, correct. The only boy with brains. Teacher's bit. Just because you're dumb. Hey, Ed. Hi. Wanna come here, Link? I can't. Sorry, Moana. Mum says we have to come straight home after school. Someday, maybe. Someday. Your father wants to see you. I think you know what it's about. He's waiting for you. Admit it, Ed. I know it was you. Just say you stole the grapes and I'll stop. Does it sting? Yeah. What do you reckon? Should we destroy the evidence? Merciful Lord, bless this food, as we remember those less fortunate than ourselves, who through no fault of their own are denied seats at the tables of plenty. Amen. 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 Would you like me to make something else, Ed? No. Do you know what's happening in America right now, Ed? The poor can't afford food, but rather than sell it at a price they can afford, they burn it. People are going hungry, and they're burning food. How are we supposed to know what's going on in the rest of the world? We're the only family on our street without a wireless. There's a very good reason for that. Tell us. It's embarrassing. Why can't we have a wireless like everyone else? Because, young lady, you're frivolous enough already without listening to propaganda and mindless radio serials. You're better than that. You all are. The Hillary's read. The headmaster said Edmund's very advanced for his age. Mm. He completed the curriculum two years ahead of everyone else. And the local children, they're rough types. And Ed's a sensitive boy, as you know. Mr Sullivan thinks he should go to Auckland Boys Grammar. Who'd do his jobs around here? Well, if you're a day boy, he could take the train every day and do his chores after school. Does Mr Sullivan have any suggestions on how we're supposed to pay for all this? What about Rex? Well, Rex have to go to Auckland Grammar School now too. Rex is more practical than England. He likes doing things with his hands. 
and the local technical college would suit him better. Mr. Sullivan thinks if Ed set his mind to it, he could be a bank manager or an accountant. Splendid. The very man Jesus threw out of the temple. say about feet you have a go i said don't use your feet well, you're not listening to me get over on that bench change it round come on let's get a little pace in there hold it get down from there what's your name boy hillary sir can't hear you don't mumble hillary sir look at you hillary your ribs poke out, and your spine needs straightening. You're deformed. Over there with the rest of the cripples and misfits. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh if I was you. All right, back into it. Go, let's go. Come on, put some effort in. Keep those knees together. Our rope was not long enough for us to websail down, and the idea of climbing down without support from above was not to be contemplated. Therefore, we just had to reach the summit. Driving snow stung my eyes. My lungs burnt with every step. Bitter cold squeezed the marrow on my bones like a vice. I was dying and I knew it. And the mountain knew it too. She didn't care. Why should she? I was the intruder who unbidden. You drop one of those, it'll be hell to pay. <laughs> I mean it!
Do you know what time it is, Percy? These boys have got school tomorrow morning. We're nearly finished. Have you asked your father yet? Ask me what? Ed's class is going on a school trip to Rural Payo and he wants to go with them. How much will this cost? I could pay for it. With what? Pocket money, Omi. Working most days, every weekend and every holiday since I was six. Well? Well, think about it. You owe me. It's only fair. Ed. I said I'll think about it. Missing. Hillary, sir. Hillary! Where the hell do you think you're going, boy? Amazing sight, isn't it, sir? I suppose it is. When people write about mountains, sir, it's always she and her. Why is that? I don't know, boy. I can't answer that. Maybe it's because they're beautiful. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. If we knock this off today, we won't need to come back tomorrow. Christmas Day. That's big of them. Oh, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> what are you up to tonight, Ed? I'm going to a party. You want to come? No. I'm going to go to the flicks. We get out of here on time. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. Just one, please. Just the one? Yes, please. It's two shillings, thanks. How's university? Not going anymore. Oh. I didn't like it much. I'm working on the honey farm now with Dad and my, my brother. So I might see you around then? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> quarter of a century, the manhood of New Zealand has heard and answered the call to arms. And as they parade, the people of Wellington give their boys a stirring farewell. Think of leaving your home 14,000 miles away to fight for a principle and a sentiment and admire the gallantry of New Zealand's volunteers. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Moana. Thanks. 
Thank you. My dad's opposed to conscription. He doesn't think we should go to war. My brothers are enlisting in the army. I'll put my name down for the Air Force. What does your father think about that? I haven't told him yet. Well, I wouldn't leave it too long if I were you. You know nothing about war, Ed. War is an exercise in futility and barbarity. You keep on going on about peace and justice. War is none of those things. War is against the teachings of Jesus Christ. Keep going on about war, but this war is different. The Great War was a needless waste of life. This is different. Everybody is out doing their bit, and I'm stuck here. I should be out doing my bit. Ed. Beekeeping is a reserved occupation. You can do your bit for your precious war if it working here with me. I'm sorry, Rex. I only allow one exemption per family. You should have asked me first. For God's sake, Ed, stop grizzling and be grateful. I'll register as a conscientious objector. I'll put you in a detention camp, Rex. You're in for a tough time. Let's hope it's a short war. Excuse me. Without me around to set the pace, you'll probably be working Christmas days from now on. <laughs> Struth, where's a ton? They put in a can of honey. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Temper. I want to do something with my life, June. I want to make something of my life. I want to climb mountains. I want to go fight for my country. I want to... You have to stand up to him. I did. And I got the radio. Eventually. Can I have a word, Dad? Yes. Now that the season's kaput, 
I thought I might knock off the maintenance and head down and see Rex. Your brother would appreciate that, I'm sure. Name your poison. Just uh, water. <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. I'll get you a beer. Or maybe a shandy, just a small one. Not from down here, eh? Auckland. Yeah, I thought so. Hey, Jim, more of your people have escaped. Jim Rose, Auckland Alpine Club. Ed Hillary. Do a bit of tramping, climbing, do you, Ed? You should join the club. Well, I'm just a beginner. Need to learn the ropes. This is the man that you need to talk to. Mick here is one of the best guides in the country. <laughs> hey. Ed. Hang on. Looks <laughs> like that bloody dude. Come on, line him up. <laughs> Clearly, the war isn't dangerous enough for them. Get a couple of days off, what do they do? The Grand Traverse of Mount Cook, that's what. Mad bastards. <laughs> Guess they won't be paying for drunks tonight, eh? Yep. Uh, good morning. Morning. Are you available for lessons? Why not? Got an ice axe? No, not really, no. You need a big bugger. Help yourself. It's gonna weigh a ton when you get tired. Christ, doesn't matter. Won't be doing much today, just the basics. Your bloody horses, I'm trying to demonstrate something here. Why don't I lead for a bit? Give you a breather. I think I got the hang of it. Not as easy as it looks. How's that? Not bad for a beginner. Done. I might go a bit higher. See yourself.
Easy. It was fun. How much is this? You can keep the bloody thing. On one condition. What's that? Promise me I'll never have to share a rope with you again. Books. <laughs> Dad insists you need some more honey. Very good. Thank them for me. I will. Rex, there's something I wanted to tell you in person. I'm not happy with the direction my life's taking. I, on the other hand, uh, hmm. I'm leading this god-awful existence trying to keep dad happy and you know what that's like and and i'm having serious doubts about pacifism you wouldn't be human if you didn't dad more than doubts really i think pacifism's a wonderful ideal i really do get to the point I've enlisted in the Air Force. You selfish bastard. I've spent four years in the hole, eating the stinking food and looking through barbed wire because of you. I've lost all my friends. I send them letters, most of them come back and opened or covered. And this is all because Grandma Boy here didn't have to go to war. I'm sorry, Rex. I really am. You have to follow your conscience and I have to follow mine. It's time I started running my own life. You told him? Brave enough to go to war, but not brave enough to tell your own father. Good luck. How could you do this to your brother? How could you be so selfish? And for what? To go to war? No matter how noble and righteous the cause, son, trust me, I know. War makes coarse beasts of every man. I witnessed decent men engage in savagery. I saw weak men descend into barbarism. And I saw young men of great promise snuffed out like candles. I made up my mind. I'm going.
if I've been a hard task, Master Reed. Because I wanted to make you strong, prepare you for a harsh world. There's great promise in you. I couldn't bear to see that snuffed out. Please, God, come back to us in one piece. Bloody good, mate. You've read it a thousand times now. It's Nandy Devi by Eric Shipton. This is the greatest book on climbing in the Himalayas ever written. It's my page, thank you. Auckland grammar, eh? Jesus, mate. The fines are going to be bloody huge on this one. <laughs> Attention, please. Attention. Here we go. Brace yourself, Ed. Another warning on the perils of catch and clap. You wouldn't listen to me, though, would you? We're celebrating, mate. Left it too late, Ron. What? Stuffed it up for Rex. Oh, shake yourself. You should be getting back. Yeah, might as well. Nothing's biting anyway. You think they're going to send us home? Who you knows? Bloody freezing in Invercargill right now, so they can take their time for all I care. <laughs> Cessation of hostilities is not too bad, I reckon. Topless, dusky maiden each, and life will be complete, eh? If you say so, Ron. Jeez, Ed, get out! What the hell? Mate, that's any help? Yeah, that's me. Well, there you go. A bit crowded in third class. Thanks. G'day, Squire. George Lowe. Good yeah, Hillary. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Climb a bit, dear. A little bit. Yeah, I thought I might have a crack at Beaumont if you want to tag along. As long as you don't slow me down. I'll do my best. Nothing's 
So, what happened to your back? Got fried in Guadalcanal when I was in the Air Force. Flying. Fishing. Fishing. Petrol tank exploded on the boat and I very foolishly fell on top of it. Fair enough. Let's knock off as much as we can. This is easy. Tomorrow's gonna be the real bugger. Bloody hell. That's good steps, Ed. That's great steps. Thanks. What time did we set off this morning? 5.30. You ever thought about the Himalayas? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have. I got some friends. They're planning an expedition to Mooka Pa, but I suppose you'd be interested, would you? Could be. Give you a fair few months off work. Think you can do it? I think so. What do you do? I'm a teacher. Kids pretty much teach themselves these days. <laughs> and you? I'm a beekeeper. Ah, oh, that'd be fine. <laughs> This program is available on DVD. To order, visit shop.pbs.org or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Also available for download on iTunes.